So yeah, our clients are civil designers and um, ultimately they want their designs to work in the real world and uh, the existing underground assets can be a real headache. Um, you can get most a lot of good information from the DAO before you dig um, and it's a great place to start and all the asset owners are really interested in uh, their assets being protected. Uh, but generally, the spatial accuracy of these records aren't accurate enough to make some uh, pretty big decisions. And there's also a lot more uh, underground than that's on these plans. So that's when you guys are uh, out there employing your subsurface locators, which I'm assuming you guys are doing. Um, so yeah, uh, recently there's been a new, new standard that's been introduced in just uh, how to qualify the data that we're picking up out in the field. And, um, and ultimately, all that really means for you guys is attributes. And then from those attributes, you're going to get, well, trust. And ultimately, that's, that's what we want to give you guys when you're looking at our drawings. Um, the ability to make some decisions um, that you know are going to work when you get into the construction. Um, so yeah, you're going to be able to budget for those, moving those assets. Just get on with your clash detection and, you know, obviously integrate um, some of the utilities that are already there, you know, so get on to saving some money. Um, so what are we actually doing? Well, Basically, we're just taking all that quality D information from all the asset owners, which is going to be quality D, and uh, we're just moving it up to a quality A and B level. Um, and I'm not going to go into too much of the detail of the gear that we're using, but I'm, I'm sure you've come across it, you know, EM locators, uh, GPRs. And ultimately, um, we're potholing, cutting up the road, um, getting down, visualising the utility, got our uh, total stations out there and um, pinning those points. So yeah, we're getting, we're actually doing a structural survey but at the same time, you know, a pipe has a size, it has material and, um, you know, we capture all that data as well. Uh, so this is from the, uh, the standard and it's Pretty straightforward. How's my pointer working? Hey. Okay, so here we've got a little A that's saying it's a manhole. So we can obviously visualize the pipe down here. We can get our invert. This is depicting us locating it with our gear. And that's going to be a quality B point. And then you're going to smash a few potholes in along the way, capturing your quality A points. Um, and that's the real world. So we're making a little forest planting PVC pipe trees. And um, it looks quite ugly once we've been to site. And uh, I don't know if you've been to Perth, but it's, there's these forests everywhere. Um, but ultimately, you're killing two birds with one stone. So you're getting that 3D data so you can get on with your design. And then when your construction crews get out there, you've got, you've got all the utilities potholed, so um, your asset owners are going to be super happy. Um, you've taken every step you can to avoid a disaster. And I've seen a few. I don't know if you guys have got any good disaster stories, but um, we can swap them later on tonight. All right, so this is like a typical... Uh, Telstra plan. Uh, I'll just, I'm just sort of highlight sort of a, this is a more of a sort of highway realignment um, project that we did recently. Um, and the sort of data we, we get and, and how you can actually um, get your uh, price down for what we're doing out in the field. Um, obviously, You've just got this Telstra cable just running in the field because there was probably some rocks here they didn't want to go through. So this is that same 
um, Telstra line here that we've picked up. And the, the point I want to stress here is, you know, you really want to get your alignments, so DXF of your alignment to you guys in the fields. It's going to bring your cost down of what, of what we're doing out there by a whole bunch. So you're just not blanketly potholing everywhere and collecting a whole bunch of data you don't actually need. So, you know, for instance here, you know, we know they're going to tie in this track here somewhere. We'll just play ahead of the game, smash a pothole in up here, capture this data so that we know that we've got it. And just here are some of the attributes that we're picking up. And yeah, this one was another nice one that for the installation guys, just it was too rocky. So they just went out into the field. Um, so the other point as well, you know, we only want to just be having you know, we don't want to just pothole everywhere. I'm, I'm sure you guys don't want us to do that either. It's super expensive. So we're just going to put one over here, a few down the line, and potentially not none at all if you're just going to get it moved anyway. So at least you can make a decision. Okay, yeah, so once you, you know, we're capturing all that data, well, it just means you can make a really fancy uh, 3D drawing out of it. And from our point of view, it's just super handy to, uh, to make sure that our data actually makes sense. Um, you know, you can really quickly see if you've got a pipe um, shooting up into the sky or, you know, water only flows one direction. So just um, for our point of view, it's just a check. And, you know, generally we're picking up a, a, a surface as well. Okay, preserving the attributes. So, um, without the attributes, you've just got a whole bunch of lines and you probably don't want to be making any decisions uh, without the attributes and, you know, not everyone's in 12D. Um, so, and I guess getting out to Navisworks, you've got the IFC option. But um, yeah, 3D Civil um, is a bit more of a pain um, we've had pretty good luck using shape files and uh, just working on getting a just a profile in the map import. And once you've set it up once, you know you can just keep re just use it. Um, but I guess the point is here is as we move forward and and your the companies you're using, um, you want to have a look at that. Just get them to send through some some data and just see. If, you, if you're going to trust it, have a look at the attributes, see if you can work with it. I'm sure they'll be happy to um, customise what they're picking up in the field so that you can actually use it. Okay, so sometimes we get an RFQ that just says, hey, we want you to capture everything in this zone. And, you know, something like a pit in the road like that on a super busy road is just going to, it's going to cost a lot. So, yeah, I'll, I'll get out there, I'll do it. We'll get the crew out there in the middle of the night to completely destroy the pit. Um, so just, I guess, be super specific about your RFQs and uh, the more you work you do on sort of deciding, you know, what you do and don't want picked up, you know, something like this, we can just pick up the inverts around it. We know the pipe size is going to be go going into it you know, save yourself some cash. Um, but yeah, if you do, here's a couple of potholes out here. So um, yeah, it just that that's where you get the, the difference in uh, pricing, so. Um, the, other, the other hot tip, um, just blanket, you could also just blanket your RFQ and just say, hey, we want a pothole every 10 meters. You know, it's really easy to get your, in your desktop investigation, work out how many potholes there are, get all your suppliers on the even keel, and then you can just pull back from there because uh, sometimes it can be a bit grey of how many potholes, you know, especially on a 20k run of highway, um, how much do you want to spend? Um, so, yeah, let's um, just have a quick visit. So this is a pretty typical job for us. It's a council job in Perth. Uh, I just want to redevelop some foreshore area. 
um, basically, this whole area is completely locked down on with all the asset owner stuff. We've been through it all. We've picked up all their all their data. It's all potholed on site. You know, we just know that when they go to the construction phase, um, they're just not going to have an issue. And basically, this is the great thing about 12D, you're actually just looking at the raw survey data. You know, so that's just straight off the controller. Um, a few macros and um, chains um, that Paul's come up with, wherever he is. And there he is down there. You haven't seen this one yet, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, tw for 12D for uh, our, our industry is just just perfect, you know. Um, so I guess you've all seen this kind of thing, but yeah, this is what you should be getting from your uh, suppliers. You should just be able to plonk it straight into your drawing um, and just get on with, with your project, I suppose, and um, at least you know what you're up against, what you want to keep, what you want to, what's going to cause a clash, um, and yeah, when your construction crews get on with their job, it's just um, it's going to be a no-brainer and you're going to keep keep the dollar dollars from going out the window, I suppose, uh, which seems to be the name of the game. Anyway, so look, I'll be around tonight um, for a few stories on disasters, which I quite enjoy. And um, that's it.